And when you can't see past your own hurt and pain, instead of using that pain to build with somebody, use it as a bludgeon. And so we need to get past this idea that we have to be in competition with each other when it comes to pain in our lives, when it comes to suffering, because the narcissism of that will keep us from seeing each other. So instead of seeing the sacrifice that she was making for them, instead of seeing the love that it would take to get her out on the street, the kind of love that she deserves. She was met as if she was some sort of monster. But it's the conditions that are monstrous. And it's the world in which we live that is monstrous. And so we've got to get past this notion that if we alone, you as a person and me as a person alone, that if we, if I win, then everybody wins with me. No, that's not how it works. We have got to tie our fate to each other. And we have to, got, we have to start at the very lowest of the low, at the bottom of what this country has done. The bottom of the way that this country has built people because we've been built in a hierarchy and so we cannot have a hierarchy of struggle. We're all in this struggle together. And so we have to get past the idea that our strength is determined by how much suffering we can endure. And we have to start recognizing that if we don't tie our suffering and our sorrow to each other, that we're always going to be in some kind of competition. And so I had to learn in myself to let go of this idea that I that I alone own the monopoly on sadness. Because I thought that for a very long time. I thought that nobody could understand me, that nobody could love me. And I stayed in that place and it made it impossible for me to connect with people. And I am telling you this, that is as much as an education as racism is in this country. Because again, a voiceless person, a small person, an invisible person, even the ones that hide in plain sight, is not a person that's going to fight for change, is not a person that is going to push back against the status quo, is not a person that's going to fight alongside other people. And so, again, that feeling, that tightness that you felt, that is your body trying to move you into its purpose, that feeling that you have, when you lay in bed at night and you think, is this all there is? The question that you're asking is, is this all I am? And the answer is no. You are so much more than what you've been taught. And we are always lifted up and we are elevated by other people. So I wanna tell you the other thing that got me out of my voicelessness, that got me out of my disappearing act and it was this, and I, I know that uh, many of you might be pressed for time, and so I'm so grateful that you're here with me in this. I really am. Uh, I know we started a little late, you know. Um, but in this movement time, things are very chaotic, and, you know, a lot of rapid response is necessary to be in the world when we're needed. I want to tell you something that helped me. In my first ever job in human rights, I found myself traveling all across Canada because that's where I lived then, traveling all across Canada. And I was training people, people who throughout their entire lives had never had to look at somebody like me, never had to talk to somebody like me because the, the vast majority of Canada is very white, it's very rural. And so I was doing these trainings and they were mandatory trainings and they were on LGBTQ inclusion and all my coworkers were white and they were so down, they were so ready. And so we added race because if we're talking about safer spaces, we must talk about race. And so we added that, we added that, you know, and I would go there and I would give them my whole heart 
and I would try my hardest to connect. And I would go out there and I would say everything that needed to be said in the most ir irresistible way that I could make it. And it didn't seem to matter what I was doing or what I was saying. They were still writing in the evaluations at the end of the day that I was aggressive, that I was intimidating. And that was hard. And I would say something in the training and they wouldn't ask me a question about something that I had said. They would ask my peer as if I wasn't even there. And all this did for me, all it did was confirm so much of what I was afraid of in myself that I didn't matter and that I was small. And that was a moment where the training in me would have been to disappear myself. It would have been to hide. But I decided that I could not do that. And I could not do that because the work required more. And it took a little while. I want to tell you it took a little while because I, was gonna, I wanted to say, you know what? I get my paycheck at the end of the day. I don't have to work for these people. But here's the thing. And this is the lesson that helped me out of my own voicelessness. And I hope that it's useful to you. Never let anyone determine what level of integrity you walk into a room with. You see, because they were so disrespectful and they were hurtful to me, I started to shrink and I started to make my message smaller and I started to make myself smaller and I started to invisibilize myself just the way that I had been taught. But in that moment when I decided that I was not going to shrink for the sake of those people's comfort, that I was going to shine, that I didn't need to make them see the light, I just needed to be the light. And that whatever happened next, well, that was on them. That was wherever they wanted to go. That was whatever they wanted to be in their lives. But I must be the invitation. And when you make the invitation, not everyone is going to be able to accept it. Not everyone is going to be able to see you in your full light, you shining, you as big as you could possibly be, you in abundance. And even still, you must be you to the best of your ability because there is no one in the world like you. And if there's no one in the world like you, it means that there's no one in the world who has the story that you have, who has the pain that you have, who has the expertise that you have, and you have all of those things. And we need all of it. And we need all of you. And so I worked at it and I said, I'm not going to let these people determine what level of integrity I enter any room with. I didn't, it doesn't matter to me who is in there. And I stayed as the invitation and I may have adjusted bandwidth here and there, but I made sure that I was the light everywhere that I went. And it wasn't my job to convince them. It wasn't my job to force them to change. It was my job to stand in what I believed in and what I knew to be true and to be the invitation for other people to see and do the same thing. And so what I wanna to say to you now is sometimes when we think we have so little power, we make change impossible in ourselves and in the world. And it's time that you started to live the life that you deserved. All this movement time is, is a reminder that it is never too late to be the person that you always thought that you could be. It is never too late to be the person you always thought that you could be. And that question that you had at night or in the mirror, when you wonder, when you go through the day to day, and again, you think, is this all that there is?